guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Reading Bear, and I hope you are ready for some more stories. And today, we'll take a look at some new entitled people content. If you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comment. And now, let's dive right into the stories. The first story is titled My Mom Got My Karen of a Teacher Demoted. So, this happened back sometime around 2009. I was a sophomore in high school. This was about a year before my autism diagnosis. So, I have a math disability, and it affects my ability to do things with numbers. Ever since 7th grade, I had been put into a special ed math class since my math skills weren't good enough for the regular classes. Freshman year, we had a really good math teacher. Sophomore year, we ended up with a new teacher. She was the cheerleading coach at my local high school. Now, I was a good kid in class. I didn't talk when the teacher was talking, I didn't cause distractions, I was honest, and never used my phone during class. I was the kind of kid that the teachers probably really appreciated. Anyway, she was nice to everybody else, but for some reason, she decided that I was the one she was going to pick on. Over the course of two semesters, she would yell at me pretty much once every day, called me a liar on several occasions when I was being truthful, she would call her previous class her dud class, and when I told one of my other teachers, Mrs. M tried to get me to work things out with Ms. C. Ms. C said I was mistaken, called me a liar, and manipulated me into saying I was mistaken about her doing anything to me, then walked out. After that, Mrs. M said, she just manipulated you, right? I said, yep. One day, when I was in class with Ms. C, I had a question about how to do a problem, so I raised my hand and asked how to do it. Ms. C said, op, that problem is so easy even a monkey could do it. So, my mom had been writing everything I said about Ms. C down and at the end of the year, my mom went to the sophomore principal, there was a principal for each grade. It is important to note that the sophomore principal that year was African American. My mom said to him, I want to have a talk with you about OP's special ed teacher. Now Op has had a number of special ed teachers in her life and none of her teachers have spoken to her the way this teacher does to her. My mom started reading that this problem is so easy even a monkey could do it, comment that the teacher made and his eyes widened. My mom said, Op will not be having her next year. He said, you're right, Op will not be having her next year. After that, she was demoted to only assisting in classes. Not sure if she still retained the title of cheerleading coach or not though. The next story is titled My Worst College Roommate. Back in my undergrad I lived in the dorms all four years. Lots of reasons for that, not worth getting into. I had some wonderful roommates, but this one was. The. Worst. I had a room due to a disability. Mine is not obvious, this is actually important. Roomie, F, was moved into my room about two weeks into the semester. I had been single in a double room for a while just through pure luck. I didn't object to a new roomie, it was supposed to be two to a room. This person's disability was obvious, though I will not share what because it's only relevant that it was obvious. I found out quickly that she used this as an excuse to be awful to everyone. She would rarely leave the room. Only one of her classes was online but the rest were meant to be in person. She spent the rest of time in our room in bed and watching reality TV. I used the microwave to make my breakfast in the morning. She hated that and started shouting at me to stop one morning. I hate conflict, so I just obliged. We went to a smaller university, so this was literally the most convenient thing to do. The only other thing was either walking all the way to the restaurants or going to convenience store. I tried to accommodate her, only to my own detriment. My health suffered from the amount of fast food I was eating cause she could not deal with the fact that a microwave makes noises. She only escalated from there. I don't fully recall everything, but I get sick with respiratory stuff when I get extremely stressed, and she made me that stressed constantly. I was sick so much between stress and my diet cuz. Luckily, any time I had a fever, she had to vacate the room. I was sick with a high fever four times in two months because of the stress of living with her. I knew her life had to be hard, so I was just a doormat. It came to a head one night when I was studying for a test. Remember what I said about reality TV? She watched it on a very high volume, too. I asked her to turn it down. Not off, down. I was not rude about it at all. Something like, hey, would you turn down your TV a little bit, please? I have a huge test tomorrow. 
She huffs and, with all the sarcasm she could physically muster, she turns off the TV, throws her remote on the bed, starts throwing on her coat, and calls a friend and says in a near shout, Yeah, my roommate is kicking me out of the room. I was so shocked I didn't even know what to say. She then turns to me and says, You know, common areas are for studying. That's where you should be if it's that important. I managed to stammer out, it's my room, too. And no that is not what the common areas are usually used for in this dorm. That was absolutely true, BTW. Video game parties dominated those rooms. The next day I'm emailed by the hall director who says my roommate has lodged a complaint about me and we are required to go to her office for a meeting. Rumi had told the hall director all this bull about me kicking her out. The meeting was just Rumi shouting at and about me, and it became very obvious very quickly that the hall director didn't believe her. HD tried to be as neutral as she could, but it was very hard with Rumi just shouting. Thank God I had built up credibility with the hall director before this. After the meeting ended with Rumi storming out, the hall director told me that this girl had moved a couple times already before she was placed with me. Turns out Rumi picked fights with everyone, this was not new behavior. She moved out days later. I got to enjoy the last month of the semester with a new roommate who was wonderful. I was not sick at all that last month. I've since learned to stand up for myself, but holy crap I have never felt anxiety paralysis like that since her. The next story is titled AMI the a-hole for confronting my cousin in front of the whole family for stealing from my house? I, late 30s male, hosted Thanksgiving at my house. My husband, 50s male, and I have a nephew, 16, who stays with us part-time. He has a bedroom on the second floor, and my bedroom is on the third floor. It's a sweet suite, with a sitting room living room, two walk-in closets and the bedroom. When you walk up the stairs you walk into the sitting room, then there's a small living room, then the bedroom and then you go into either one of the closets from the bedroom. I have a nephew who is 5 and is exhibiting signs of autism. His mother, 27F, is my second cousin. She came, along with her two brothers, and their mother. So, everyone's taking turns entertaining my five-year-old nephew because he requires a little bit of extra attention. At one point I leave the living room on the first floor, and I see him on the stairs, playing with a toy car and what looks like a watch. I look closer and I see the watch belongs to my husband. And it's a pretty expensive watch to be smashing into a toy car. I asked my nephew where he got it, and he said uncle's, 29 male, backpack. I asked him if he could show me. He leads me to the piano room, where everyone put their jackets and whatnot, and my one cousin's backpack. My nephew opens the front portion of the backpack, and I see some other jewelry in there. I was really pissed off, so I grabbed his backpack, and grabbed my nephew and went into the living room. I dumped the backpack out onto one of the coffee tables and asked my cousin what the heck was going on with the fact that two of my husband's watches, and a necklace that belonged to my mother were in his bag. I dumped out the bag, and the nephew who lives with me, his switch was in there. The cousin whose backpack it was freaked out. Saying clearly my autistic nephew put stuff in there that he had taken from upstairs. I know that's not the case, because he's not tall enough to get to the dresser where the jewelry was. Nor do I think he would even wander that far from everyone else. Am I the a-hole for confronting him in front of everyone? Comment said not the a-hole. In fact this cousin, who should never darken your doorstep again, is extra ta, because they also lied against a disabled child. Let the whole family see the level of their shit I too'd. Another comment said not the a-hole. I would have been raging. And the five years old little boy told you the truth, straight up, which is pretty impressive much more so than his uncle. The next story is titled Poss Landlord. Had a couple instances of landlord stealing packages. So, I sent a package full of used cat litter to myself. Postal tracking engaged. Wrote on the package happy holidays. Three different color duct tape sealing the package, so it was definitely tampered proof. Video the whole process on my phone for evidence. Supposed to be delivered tomorrow but I'm going to give it a couple days to really grind on her as to what's in it. No she won't be able to resist and when she does, federal mail charges. Most creative and legal way I could think to deal with the problem. The next story is titled what I did when I caught him with another girl. Petty revenge? I'll date myself. Some years ago, I was going steady with a boy, had his senior ring. We were on the phone one day, the old, do you want to do something tonight? He says no and I'm like cool think I'll just stay home too. Well, I decided not to stay home, 
went to the cowboy dance hall that we hung out at, 30 minutes away. Walked in and lo and behold not only was he there he was with another girl. I marched right over to their table, the OS at hash t look on his face was priceless. Dropped his ring on said table in front of the girl and told her, I reckon you need this more than I do, turned around and commenced to dance with just about every guy in the place then started all over again, never once looking at him, them. Felt absolutely great. Lived in small town Texas where the guys would go to the next town over to cheat. Never could understand why females would get mad at the other girl when she had no way of knowing he had a girlfriend. The next story is titled, Kid Insults My Eyebrows, He Meets Browser. I'm from the UK and my school functions a bit differently to other schools in the region. It's a private school, and we get two short holidays, about two to three weeks, and two long holidays, two months or so, after every school term. This takes place before our big winter holiday. The antagonist of our story will not be name dropped, so we will call him Ego Biggins. He's your classic year 7 to 9 high schooler who bullies people for a reaction, and soaks up any validation he can get from his pack of equally smooth-brained friends. Also to mention, he's also one of those kids who says, I'm Asian but I hate Asian people, and who thinks he can get away with racism just because he's not white. You'd know what I'm talking about if you've met the type of guy. Anywho, onto the story. I'm a 14-something kid now, and if you spent more than 5 minutes around me, it would become very obvious I'm on the autism spectrum. I've never been the best at masking, it just wastes too much energy. Now if you've met a boy like Ego Biggins in your life before, you'd know his type love to get a reaction out of autistic people, and loves to pick at their vulnerabilities when it comes to social cues. Picture this, Ego's on his procrastination stroll around the art class, seeing who his next victim could be. He starts picking on the kid sat next to me, saying how his artwork had the colors of the Romanian flag, like it was a bad thing? I could never be able to put myself in the shoes of kids like this guy. I just tell the nice kid next to me to ignore him, because Ego's diet consists of internalized insecurities and reactions from other kids. Seeing that I knew how his quote-unquote humor worked, he decided to find a different group of kids to pick at. Later in our lesson, I was finishing up my Andy Warhol and Roy Lichtenstein inspired piece, I could ramble on and on about all different types of pop art and what a big movement it was. Ego Biggins toddles my way once again. He's singing a song, awfully may I add, that was along the lines of, I wish I knew you wanted me, over and over again. My friend and I made a joke about how nobody would want him if he kept singing like that. Ego Biggins probably heard this and told us to, shut up, and made a comment towards my friend's art once again. So I said in return, I know what you're like ego, you only say crap like that to get a reaction out of people, it's kinda sad honestly. Then he did something that I would never let slide. Made a joke about my eyebrows. My eyebrows are a big part of me, metaphorically and physically, they're pretty large but I would never be ashamed of my little face pals. Growing up in the UK mid-late 2000s you'd know that thin eyebrows were a huge fad, and if you had thick eyebrows like I did, you were ugly and horrendous looking. The trend died down very quickly, but I was still left with a lot of body and facial issues because of it. Both me and my older brother had thick eyebrows growing up, special thanks to our dad, and at one point, my brother shaved half of his eyebrows off because kids at school made fun of them, we were probably 8 and 7 at the time too, which just made it worse. Ever since then I was taught to love and cherish my thick brows by my parents, and should never be ashamed of them. And even later, thick eyebrows became a trend, and everyone dreamed of having my bushy boys once again. One point on the scoreboard for humans being way too confusing. I try to be the friend that you can go to when crap just happens, I've had a fair share of bad experiences myself so I know what it's like to just need a person to talk to. If I had 20 pence for every time one of my friends came up to me to crap talk and gossip about ego biggins, in the wise words of Victorious, you'd be here, and I'd be on a yacht. Let's just say, he wasn't very liked and would just try to stick with his stuck-up buddies. Knowing a lot of things about Ego Biggins, I decide the next time he tried something, I'd give him exactly what he wanted. A reaction. And so he did, he took a blow at one of my friends and I went off. Oh my ducking god, Ego Biggins. You are so annoying, no wonder why everyone talks about you behind your back. His big shot character broke away for a split second and you could tell he was not ready for what I said, but I just kept going. All you do is crave support from people who don't even want you here. What I said got a chuckle from some kids in the class, and some even agreed that he should just sit down and continue his work like the rest of us. 
No wonder why even your friends talk about you behind your back. I repeated. In real life, there were probably a lot more stutters and murmurs than I written out, but I think I got my point across. He stammered, and looked around at his friends, who were just as stumped as he was. He responded with a, whatever, and a sarcastic, that was really hurtful, I'm going to tell the teacher. I could tell he didn't know what else to say, I've dealt with kids like him, and a sarcastic, that really hurt, is always their last resort, it's always so pathetic. I felt really accomplished for some reason, like all the people that had hurt me were in that room, and I gave them what I had bottled up for years. After that, he didn't bother me for the rest of the lesson, but I knew I knocked at his insecurities and he was pissed at that I knew how to dig under his skin. I think my art class next year will be a lot more peaceful. The moral of the story, insult the browse, and meet browser. The cheap Mario knockoff made of 40% bottled up anger and 60% thick eyebrow hair. But seriously, if there is one person you do not want to be during high school, it's ego begins. If you find yourself slipping into a rabbit hole where you bully for attention, just do something nice for someone, even if it's as small as holding a door open, and I guarantee that validating feeling will course through your veins, and it will make you feel amazing. And ego begins, if you're reading this, you're what is wrong with the world. Knock it the duck off. But if you are not ego begins, I hope you enjoyed my story and I hope you have a wonderful day. And if this somehow ends up on a Reddit readings podcast, what's up? I like cheese. The next story is titled I guess they're not all bad. Over a year ago, I moved abroad and took up a role as a front office supervisor in a large hotel in my city. Now, this hotel was falling apart. We received constant complaints and while I was working, they were passed on to me. With management that did nothing about solving the problems, you received the same complaints daily and it gets to you after a while. However, we had a shiny extended stay guest staying with us for work who insisted on being called by his first name. This guest was from the same country that I'm from, though not the same area. He never asked for anything and was quite self-sufficient. He'd always wave and say hello to whoever was working the front desk, addressing us each by name. He was honestly just a pleasure to have as a guest. Eventually, he checked out and went back home, a sad day for our front desk team, but he said he might be back in the future. Back in June, I left the job. I was just so tired of the industry and the guests and bad management. Recently, one of my former co-workers messaged be saying that our favorite guest was back in town and had brought me a gift, which was quite unexpected. When I went to collect it from the hotel, I found out that he had been to one of the major cities near where I'm from and picked me up a shot glass with the city on it. It was just such a sweet gift. I left my job as front office supervisor after about eight years in the hospitality industry. I left quite disheartened, but this gesture really did soften me a bit. I got into the mindset of assuming that all of the hotel guests are the worst. But they're not all bad, some of them are just quite loud. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comments.